in order to have good protection of our public health, particularly children, but also other vulnerable adults who are at risk, say, who've got cancer, we really need very high uptakes of immunisation uh, across the board. Now, if you haven't got high uptake, then it's very easy to break herd immunity and for transmission to occur from one person to another and to another, especially uh, diseases that are highly transmissible, like whooping cough and influenza and chickenpox. All of these we can prevent by vaccination, but we need very high rates of immunisation to stop transmission. The current level of immunisation uh, for Australian children overall is really pretty good. It's about 93%. But that hides some detail which is really important. There's probably six or seven communities across Australia where immunisation uptake is much lower than 90% and can be as low as 50%. And those are the places where infectious diseases are much more likely to transmit. Australia's gone out on a limb with this new policy to restrict uh, welfare payments to parents uh, if they don't vaccinate their children. We don't know what effect it will have. It could be positive, but at most I can't see it producing more than a 1% increase in immunisation uptake. The government's new plan to remove family assistance payments from parents who don't vaccinate uh, comes with good intentions, which is to see higher vaccination rates of children in Australia. Unfortunately, it's unlikely to make a meaningful dent on our immunisation rates and comes with a raft of unintended negative consequences. It does uh, disproportionately affect lower income families because they're the ones who are means tested and eligible for these payments. The families on a higher income are not affected and they're actually more represented in the vaccine refusal group than families on a lower income. For some families, they'll no longer be able to send their children to childcare because they can't afford it. And that A means that those children miss out on those educational opportunities. And it also means that uh, working mothers will not be able to participate in the workforce if they can't get childcare. We need to develop a better evidence base for dealing with hesitant parents, the ones who are unsure but could be convinced. We need to learn more about educating people at high school. We need our nurses, our midwives, our children's nurses to be better educated so they always give positive information about immunisation to pregnant mothers uh, and to other members of the public. It would be ideal to see some other reforms and changes implemented as well, some improvements to a system that currently works quite well. And those changes include implementing more consistent reminders for parents before a vaccine is due, and perhaps even trialling a national SMS reminder. It's really important to address the people whose minds you can change. And there's a big chunk of people, maybe 5 or even 10%, who are somewhat hesitant. And if only you took the time to listen to their concerns, provide answers, and uh, educate them in a way which addresses both intellectual and emotional aspects, then I think you can make a real difference. We need committed, confident, knowledgeable health professionals to implement our complex and large vaccination program in Australia today. And we know that support systems for those professionals and those organisations could make a big difference. If every community had over 90% vaccine uptake, we could control virtually every vaccine preventable disease. The big news is that if we could get everyone at high rates of immunisation, we really could knock almost every disease on the head.